In this closing chapter, we will revisit models of communication, review nonverbal codes, and consider strategies for nonverbal success moving forward. Nonverbal communication refers to any communicative characteristic or behavior that intentionally or unintentionally conveys a message without the use of verbal language. Communication patterns are both nonverbal and verbal messaging follow the same communication patterns. The transactional model of communication applies to both forms. The primacy of nonverbal communication makes it more likely to be trusted. For example, Grant and Nadine use nonverbal communication to hint at their platonic relationship. Different codes have different potential. It depends on the context of interaction with another person. For example, Geneva might be able to convey her feelings of a crush on a classmate by using multiple codes. As a recap, a communicator can use multiple kinesic behaviors at the same time to clarify the message that he or she intends to convey. Indeed, humans have also been encultured to pay attention to the kinesic behaviors that are seen in others. When we study proxemics, we are concerned about the changes in the physical distance between two people as those changes can either trigger physiological arousal or a fight or flight response. Depending on the intent of the sender of the message, the person will feel either threat or affection. The person's emotional state will be indicated by the multitude of other verbal or nonverbal behaviors. Haptics is a physiologically arousing behavior, where the other verbal and nonverbal messages are immediately observed upon touch. Oculesics refers to the use of one's eyes to observe both proximal and distal nonverbal communication. Eye contact is very ambiguous in knowing whether threat or attraction is being communicated by the interaction partner. Other cues are needed to be relied on, in order to make a distinction. Vocalics is typically learned at an early age. It refers to how to intentionally craft one's vocal sounds in order to reflect relational meaning, informational content, and emotional tone. Vocalics is the nonverbal code with the greatest discretion within interpersonal encounters. Certain aspects of physical appearance cannot be changed in order to influence the message that people receive. People interpreting an aspect of another person's physical appearance, when that feature is not intended to be communicative, is a difficulty. Often, people are judged on appearance, over which they have no knowledge or control. Environment is about acquiring culturally relevant reactions to a space. Some environmental features may have culturally agreed upon meanings that can offer guidance to individuals. Olfactics is important because many scents may be ambiguous in their communication potential, as scents are often characterized on a continuum from good to bad. It is more difficult to intentionally manage from situation to situation. Chronemics refers to one's interaction with a culture's attitude with time influences chronemic characteristics. One's own personal consumption of popular media will be impacted by one's understanding of nonverbal messaging. One might pick subtle cues from the actors and characters that one encounters across media consumption. Thus, one is less likely to think deeply about persuasive messages, when the focus is on nonverbal messages such as attractiveness and charisma, which may hurt our judgments. Our overall understanding of a situation will be added to by the availability of multiple channels of information. This will cause us to focus more on one message channel than another. As we approach popular media while moving forward, we will have to become more critical consumers of content. An increased responsibility to use one's knowledge responsibly comes with a better understanding of nonverbal communication. That is because practical communication skills might help people manipulate other people in their lives more easily. Therefore, ethical choices become more important than in many other disciplines. Influencing others and gaining their compliance makes a communicator responsible for any outcome that may result from his or her communication. Our cultural assumptions about race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, age, ability, or a variety of other socio-demographic characteristics of another person might influence us in communicating messages. Our natural inclination toward similarity may make life easier. However, it may also cause the attitudes, values, beliefs, opinions, and actions of dissimilar people to be ignored or be discredited. Even if our manner of approaching our goals seems significantly different from one another, we are all motivated by similar desires or hopes. Regardless of one's background or belief, the fundamental driving forces for human behavior are relatively similar in origin. Thus, recognizing and acknowledging the moments when someone appears to be different is one of the best ways to address diversity. One needs to examine one's own assumptions about what nonverbal codes might have contributed to our sense of difference. For example, Nan had her own assumptions about Claudia, which created a confrontational encounter and, 
subsequently, a learning experience for both. Surveys, quizzes, and self-assessments highlight opportunities to better understand the self by using measures based upon social science research. Such quizzes may be an interesting way to prompt our own thinking about a topic. However, they may offer relatively underdeveloped insights into our own life experiences. Similarly, many of the fun online quizzes that we see on popular websites and apps are based on the author's whims. There are a variety of factors that may influence one's responses in online quizzes, which the researchers have not considered. Thus, one must take every self-assessment that one encounters throughout life with a grain of salt. In contrast, scholars test an idea and make an assertion under a variety of conditions. Additional research serves to test that same idea under slightly different conditions or in unique contexts. This way, our understanding of that concept is broadened. In summary, we need to use our own knowledge and intuition to help continue to test and explore a truer understanding of the self by holding with an open hand our newfound understandings of ourselves. To immediately apply the concepts we have learned to our daily life is one of the basic motivations that students have. Fortunately, applying the learned concept of nonverbal communication is easier than applying geometry. Upon discovering a new set of behaviors that we can consciously engage in, we can almost immediately change some aspects of our nonverbal behavior. For example, Phil was able to engage in simple discussions at the same level as his peers, after realizing that he needed to present himself more as an egalitarian leader and less of an authoritarian leader. Now that we have come to the end of this chapter and nearing the end of the course, I hope we will apply the lessons from this course to become clearer in our communication. Whether it is to improve our nonverbal or verbal communication, we can always grow as communicators who serve our families, organizations, and communities.